Hey everybody, this is Ben, and today we're going to talk about the DIY electric motor mount. Uh, recently, I've been sharing some videos talking about how we converted a Geo Metro to electric, and I got a question from one of the viewers, John, and John writes, Hi Ben, I was wondering how you supported the motor. Is bolting the motor to the transmission via the adapter plate enough? I'm concerned about the torque that the motor would exert on the transmission. 80 pound motor. Uh, thanks for the question. And yes, you're absolutely right. You need the back end of that motor to be supported. Uh, with the exception of something like, for example, a very small motor, uh, you need to get a, a motor supported. Uh, so what we did is originally in that car, there were actually three points of contact. The engine and the transmission were bolted together, and then there were three mounts that connected that entire unit into the, the frame of the car, and two of those were on the transmission. So I just reused those because I reused the transmission in the car, but that meant that we had to repurpose that third mount, which was on the passenger side, to appropriately connect to that new electric motor that was going in there. Now these mounts, they're, uh, they're kind of interesting. They're about yay big. Uh, and the rubber on the inside, steel on the outside, they look about like a hockey puck, but with some cutouts to allow for a little bit of flexing. And what those do is they, uh, they smooth out the vibrations that you would otherwise get in the car from the engine. Uh, they also allow for the engine and transmission to uh, be able to twist a little bit. So when you uh, accelerate suddenly in the car, for example, it, it takes up some of that shock. Uh, so basically what I did was with the electric motor connected to the transmission, uh, I used a jack to level out the electric motor and then measure between that third point where that third mount went and the end of the motor. There were also some mounting bolt holes on the back of it, so I was able to use those for the mount. Now if the motor didn't have something like that, uh, you might be able to build a cradle to go under the motor or a ring mount that would actually clamp around the motor. Those are two other options. Uh, another neat little trick that I did is uh, I found out that a lot of times if you want to check uh, where bolt holes are, for example, if something's dirty or greasy already anyways, just take a piece of paper, stick it right over it, slap it down, rub it, and you'll actually leave a perfect mark uh, of where those bolt holes are. So I used that and then also used a tag board template to help design the shape because it had to reach between the motor and that mounting point. Um, I was working with some friends at this point. Um, we had a plasma cutter and arc welder available to us. And that was another big thing with this project too, was I was really learning a lot by working with some other people. So I uh, had a friend who knew how to weld. Hey, Rich, show me how to weld. Teach me some of the tips and tricks. Uh, so basically we cut out this shape uh, from a piece of steel, about an eighth inch thick. Uh, and then essentially uh, just welded that rubber mount onto it, slid the whole thing down between the electric motor and where the mount went in the car, put in the bolt that held the mount in, and then made sure we had the motor in place and then ran the two bolts in there. And then that way, the back end of the electric motor was held up. And then once again, uh, the transmission and the electric motor, just like the engine was, was all held in place with three points of contact. It was nice and level, and there was no worries about uh, uh, the weight of the electric motor twisting and, and tipping the transmission. Uh, so it worked out really well. Now, of course, I get really excited about projects. I'm learning new things. Uh, the, the shape of that part was all just uh, free-handed on a plasma cutter. Um, if you're gonna do a project like this, and you have a little bit more patience than I do, you can certainly put a little bit more time and work into it, make something that looks super clean, super sharp. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about this project. And as always, uh, if you know, please like, share, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss any more uh, videos in the future. And until next time, stay charged up. Uh, yeah, you absolutely have to support and why is that attacking me? That's horrible. Let's start all over.